This is Dr. Arif. This is his story as told by SOS children. When Arif was just three years old, he was lured into a car with the promise of toys and chocolates. His kidnappers planned to traffic him from his village in Bangladesh to Dubai, where they could sell him as a child jockey on the camel racing circuit. After being dressed in expensive clothes, he and three other children were instructed to give false names and pretend to be traveling as if they were a family. But moments before boarding the plane to Dubai, the brave little boy fled his captors, ran up to the police, and told them that the man he was traveling with was not his father. I have no idea if they understood me, but all the passengers were brought to the immigration room again, he recalled. Arif's quick thinking ultimately saved all four boys. The traffickers were arrested and sent to prison. Tragically, Arif's story is not unique, and many end up worse, with the boys not having been rescued. What if I told you that there were thousands of boys, three, four, or five-year-old boys, racing camels across the Arabian desert? Boys from poorer South Asian countries like Pakistan or Bangladesh who have been kidnapped or sold into the basic equivalents of child slavery. Their bodies, unable to cope with the stress of racing and such horrid conditions, many have actually died. This is true, and it is still happening today, even in countries where the practice is technically banned. These are the camel jockeys. Think of football to the United States, hockey to Canada, or soccer to the world. That's what camel racing is to the Middle East, and the Gulf countries in particular. The camel is extremely socially and economically important. They've provided a source of food, of wool and clothing, and a form of entertainment throughout the centuries and are used in various ceremonial forms to commemorate special events or occasions. Slowly, the use of the camel has been moving from a primary means of transportation and business to a more symbolic role. All the same, they hold a high place in Middle Eastern culture. As is the case with most things that people love, the use of camels has also been made into a sport camel racing to be exact. It's basically the same as greyhound racing or horse racing, just with the use of camels. It's a beautiful sight to behold. There are large festivals with dancing and chanting and even prizes like a chance to meet the Saudi Arabian king at the country's largest camel festival. But there's a dark side to all the fun and glitz and glamour, a dark and shady underbelly. It's simple math, really. The lighter the animal, the faster they'll go. And the lighter the weight, the less stress on the camel's spine. This then provides a conundrum. For animals that need someone to ride and control them, i.e. a jockey, how do you get the lightest person possible to ride? The answer is simple, yet horrifying. A child, child jockey to be exact, particularly children that won't or can't be found. The boys that usually become child camel jockeys are typically from South Asian countries. The Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine has an article about the health effects of racing camels on these young boys. It writes, although many child jockeys are escorted into the Gulf countries by their parents or other legal guardians for financial gain, Thousands of children are trafficked from Bangladesh, Pakistan, and countries in East Africa and sold into slavery to serve as camel jockeys. Some of these children have been bought from impoverished families by agents. Others are lured from home with promises to their families that they will be employed as domestic servants within their own countries. Destinations for young boys trafficked for the purpose of exploitation as camel jockeys include the United Arab Emirates, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Oman, and Qatar. 
The health effects of this practice have been well documented. People as young as three, four, or five have not developed enough for the stress and strain of such a grueling practice. This can include neurological damage from being thrown from said camels, bone breaks and fractures, disruptions in skeletal development due to excess trauma, and in some cases, camel racing accidents can actually be fatal for these children. The Gulf countries by and large have outlawed the use of children as camel jockeys. Take for instance, the UAE and Saudi Arabia. The first is the UAE, an elective monarchy made up of seven different emirates. The UAE banned the use of children or those under the age of 18 in child camel racing in 2005 after facing pressure from different NGO organizations in the international community such as Anti-Slavery International. Saudi Arabia also has a strict prohibition law for camel jockeys with a specialized system According to Child Slave Labor News, each jockey is required to furnish official documents attesting to their age, after which they will be issued a jockey card with a photo stamped with the particular festival seal. The government states that before a race, the competent committees inspect the jockey card, matching the photo to the name on the ID. There is a ban on those who have camel jockeys under the age of 18. If one uses a jockey that is not of age, they will not be able to receive a prize if they place. Now, in theory, this would be perfect. But in practice, as with a lot of different rules and regulations, it has created a robust underground or black market. Through this black market, thousands are kidnapped and sold or trafficked. Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine writes, it is difficult to determine the precise number of child camel jockeys in the Gulf region, given the variable and often clandestine means by which they were trafficked. It is estimated that there were 175 to 250 child camel jockeys in Qatar in 2004, and as many as 1,200 to 2,700 in the UAE during the same period. However, a respected Pakistani non-government human rights organization estimates that there may be as many as 5,000 to 6,000 child camel jockeys in the UAE and perhaps roughly 40,000 in all of the Gulf countries combined. Now, the methods of using these children have become even more dangerous. In conclusion, unfortunately, this is a practice that is still alive and well. There are still underground races and child trafficking routes that provide the child slave labor for this inhumane practice. More light needs to be shown on the nature of this underground market and more work needs to be done to pressure governments to do more, both to prevent the boys being trafficked out of their country and the Gulf countries to stop the trafficking into their countries. And that's all for this video, folks. In part two, we'll be looking at the promotion and celebration shown to the sport by big journalism sources such as Vice News. If you like this video and want more content like it, be sure to like and subscribe for videos every Friday.